Rob Cross certainly has now 5 0 up on Dan Reed. Well, that game you mentioned between Dirk van Dijvenboer and Steve Lennon. 4 2 Lennon. And Dirk's losing with 107 average. But what is it about Steve Lennon this weekend? He seems to have clicked. He had some great numbers yesterday. Not a bad time to click, is it? Has Kritschmer clicked? Well, just stay away from that double 16, Boris. Try somewhere else instead. I wouldn't be surprised if he was going for two double eights. <laughs> of course, en route to the final, a 6-1 win against Jake Jones in his opener, and Martin Schindler has beaten Yellow Class in 6-3. Yeah, Adam Hunt, unfortunately, has had a very forgettable season. Maybe a chance for him to reset. Hopefully he has a, a decent time of it at the Grand Slam qualifier tomorrow, but... It's looking very likely now that Kruchma is going to get the job done. He's got six starts and one, two, seven. And he did go for it. I had a sneaky suspicion he might. Yeah, that's that soft tip thinking you were talking about before. You can come a cropper, though. He, he, had he laid up, he'd have three darts at double here. He will only get two. And he only needed to. Boris Kritschmar, well, he did the damage early in that match. Led it 3-0. Went on to open up a, a four-leg lead at 5-1. And then gets over the line to all but secure his spot at the World Darts Championship and keep his hopes alive of making it to Minehead for the Players' Championship Finals. How could we possibly <laughs> forget? Uh, do you remember in that final when Merv yeah, was about to give it really big and then he decided, oh, I'm yeah, not going to bother? Yeah, brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. Uh, looking forward to seeing Merv on TV again. Yeah, we were all a little bit blue during the pandemic, and then we got a little dose of Merv 60. at his best, and it cheered everybody up. Joe well, Cullen ultimately, ultimately, he lost the match. <laughs> yeah, Joe Cullen, a 6-2 winner against Nick Fulwell. Andrew Gilding, a 6-3 victor against 86. David Evans. Dave Chisnell just pipping Jimi Hendrix at the post, 6-5. Yeah, interesting. Chisnell will definitely want to win today. I spoke to him last night as well. And he is 100. very chipper about his chances at the TV majors coming up. But a, a result that I'm looking at latest. Oh, let's have a look at tops instead. Game shot. That is glorious from BVP. James Wilson has just won 6-2 against Ricky Evans. 100. Well, it's not that Jacques Lobb has played poorly in this game. He's maintaining a very good 87 average. But the fact 100. Of the is that Berry is just cruising with a 96. Glenn Durant is gone from Players' Championship 30. Jermaine Watamina has dispatched him by six legs to one. And I'm sure Glenn is very 100. happy to see the end of his Players' Championship campaign for 2022. It's been rather harrowing for the pr former Premier League champion. Oh, yeah, remarkably. I mean, he shot. couldn't even have made it to Minehead by winning the tournament today. Barry Van Peer here looking to win this match with some bonfire night fireworks, but it's not going to happen. Not right now. I completely forgot it was November the 5th. Well, I think the cats and the dogs are going to be afraid a little bit later when the bonfires are lit. 81. And yeah. we celebrate Guy Fawkes night, but... I apologise for this one. I struggled parking on the way in. That apology was so warranted. Can he put this in the right space? Game can. shot on the match. Barry, Barry Van, Peer. Van Peer with a very, very healthy looking victory. A 6 2 success against the Frenchman Jacques Lab, a man who recently won on the challenge tour. But the challenge of beating Berry was too tough for him today. But looking to vault himself over the next two or three years into a different bracket maybe to do what Scott is doing himself over the next couple of years 140 interesting dynamic with this fixture actually a couple of things happened yesterday which were identical but Game that shot. is as good a start as you could possibly hope for Cullen Rids 5 Steve West 4 Steve West on the cusp of needing 82. that PDPA qualifier at the end of the month to 
give him a spot at Ali Pali, otherwise it could well be Q school for Steve. 92. Maybe only a matter of seconds that separate Williams 126. from the next round, but look how creative that is. He really does think very differently to a lot of dart players. 94. Great to watch. Superb execution. Game and a win. Skill, Williams. Williams, absolutely wonderful. Okay. Average was excellent. Performance, really well done. Jürgen van der Velde could do nothing about that. Let's have a look at the numbers. They're worth looking at. There they are. You will see some more American representation at the Slam next week, of course, as well, because too many Lenny. Leonard Gates is on the way with his unique counting skills. Soldier. Yeah, he's uh, an entertaining fella. Yes, he is. You ever seen him dance? Oh, I did, yeah. Great walk on. Loves a dance, doesn't he? Great walk on. 59. He had a great walk on at the WDF World Championship. Walked out to John Cena's music. That's a wrestling thing, isn't it? Yes, it is. Mark Double Webster's, top. Mark Webster was loving that, by the way. Is Lava loving this? Game shot. You bet he is. His time is now above Ryan Joyce in the standings right now. He goes level on money with John O'Shea. And he is currently provisionally. In fact, he goes above John O'Shea on count back yeah, at the moment. I've just seen that. Now O'Shea is in the 32 spot. He's on the bubble. And Desvan is out. He's going to have 42. to go to the qualifier. Of that, there is no doubt. Now, all of a sudden, John O'Shea gives himself a little bit of breathing room if he wins this match and this leg. And that is a brilliant setup shot. He's left himself on tops after four visits to the board, and this has not been pretty. There have been times when Darius Lavanauskas could really have put him away in this game. Adam Gavlas has been above John O'Shea 100. in the list for about 30 seconds. John wants to hurdle him. Look at this reaction. Game shot on the match. John O'Shea. He knows exactly what that means. The job isn't done, but he'd much rather be in the tournament with it in his own destiny. He's still in with a chance of even winning Players' Championship 30. Ryan Searle won their meeting this year. The other three meetings all won by James Wilson, but it's fair to say that you're going back to 2018 for a couple of those and one way back in 2013, the World Masters. And Ryan Searle has undoubtedly unlocked new levels of performance in the last few years. Levels of performance that have led to him becoming an enormous 180 hitter, capable of astonishingly high averages. And you know what? 180. A nine darter isn't out of the question either. Where well, it is now. 91. But leaves himself on 50 after nine darts. Not bad heavy metal. 135. I mean, let's be honest, it's a great leg from James Wilson. Game shot. With absolutely nothing, mind. 11 darter. Wilson stranded on 46. He's playing some very good darts, Steve Lennon. 140. He's on board 15, so if he can come through that one. Board 16 features Martin Schindler, Richie Burnett, Madders Razma, Mario van der Bahada. 121. Sixty-four. Well, both on two darters. Great dart. Game shot. Lovely stuff from James Wilson. 100 checkout taken out in two darts. The lead is extended to 4-1. You just want to put as many bodies between you in that last qualifying spot as possible. Currently held by Ricardo Petrechko from Minehead. He will not add to his tally of 18 grand. Mario van der Bahada, 750 quid behind. Andy Bolton, the same. Gian van Veen, a grand behind. But looks like he's going to cut that gap because he's leading against Joe Cullen. Steve Lennon's on a charge today. Has been all weekend. 
James Wilson's 80. on the charge here, though. Another 180. Gives himself a one treble out shot. And he's got two visits to see this off, and he's going to get match darts. Double 16. Game's really good James performance Wilson. from James Wilson. Great to see him back playing good darts, and he had to play some good darts in that game. Yes, Ryan Searle missed a bucket load of doubles, but James Wilson, the jammy dodger, there's a little glimpse into the past there. 60% on the doubles, 96.6 overall average, four 180s. Ian White's set to miss out on everything at the minute. 180. But if he can beat Barney, he'd inch closer to the World Championships. Trading 180s, these two. We've well, got a game here. 100. Probably needed another treble there, Steve Beaton, to leave himself a two darter. Game shot. Oh, that's a wonderful leg of darts from Nathan Rafferty. 11 darter, three apiece. It would be down to Ian White and Nathan 91. Rafferty. Now, Rafferty, we know he's going to be at the World Championship, but if he gets in on the Pro Tour spots, he may have a more favourable draw. I'm not sure how they'd work it if he gets 100. in on the Pro Tour as opposed to the Development Tour. There has been discussion about that sort of thing. 94. Beaton leaves himself on a double. Rafferty. Double 19. 139. Pressure applied. 100. Game shot. Pressure ignored. Last start in hand again for Steve Beaton. I believe that results elsewhere now mean that Steve Beaton, irrespective of this leg, is confirmed for the World Championship. And a man whose tour card was in serious doubt earlier on this year. Things are looking a lot, lot better for the bronzed Adonis. 100. And they're looking pretty good for him in this one anyway. 70 left. A maximum, it's got to be. Oh, no. 83. Such a frustration there. Unlucky. Nathan Rafferty's played some good stuff in this game. But Steve Beaton, when it has mattered, 38. has been very, very good. And that one didn't matter so much. You would think when he returns to the board, it is going to matter. And that's when he's delivered in this contest. 131. Game shot on the match. Steve and he beat. does deliver. Nathan Rafferty with a superior average by a number of points in that one. It's about a seven-point gap. But Steve Beaton consistently did enough in six legs to get over the line. But then you've got Dedeka and Steve Beaton in this quarter of the draw. Both unseeded players. 140. Barry Van Peer will take on Josh Rock with Dave Chisnell and Chris Doby. Both went on deep runs at the European Championship last weekend. Doby's come into some form and Chisnell in title winning form nowadays. It's an intriguing top half of the draw. A mix of players in form who've been struggling and then some top seeds who've been doing some amazing stuff for, for most of the year. Well, Hetter here producing a brilliant leg as he looks to level 56 after 64. 9 to make it 4 all. Really decent darting duel this. Tops for the Aussie ace. Game shot. it goes and it is 4-4. Four, four. You, you kind of got one guy who, who's played the tournament of his life to win a major title. And another guy who is constantly playing world-class darts but just hasn't happened for him in the majors this year. Not yet, anyway. Smith looks like he's edging again, edging ahead again here. 100. Interestingly, he is currently seeded to play Rob Cross in the first round at the Players' Championship Finals, Ross Smith, although victory in this match would elevate him higher up the, the rankings. In fact, he'd go as high as 55th ahead of his good pal Steve Beaton. Game shot. Oh, Ross Smith there. Uh, very simple. So after... About four hours today of us pouring over various rankings. It's all come down to that. It does get easier. 65. 
for, for us anyway. It gets very, very difficult for the likes of Berry and Connor. Got to be in it to win it. Mm, Connor scuts up against Andrew Gilding. Barry Van Peer will be taking on Josh Rock. <laughs> yeah, it does get tough, doesn't it? <laughs> we could Dave. see an incredible finish to this one. And the big fish might have to be netted. Oh, well, I thought he might look at a, a 170 setup shot. But he's like, I don't want to show him how to do it. He could have done with a bit of guidance, turns out. Ross Smith leaves himself on double 18 after four visits to the board in the last leg decider. That is the class of a major champion, and that's what this man is. Game shot and on he the gets it as well. Smith. With Hetta waiting on the same finish. A big puff of the cheeks there from Ross Smith. A real battle between two of the top talents in 2022. And you can see what it means to Ross Smith. And Connor Scott has taken the first leg in that match. 174. Excellent setup from James Wade, who's playing at a very high standard now. One hundred and forty. Leaving Jamie Hughes stranded behind him. Fifty six. One hundred and thirty. Oh, excellent use of the bullseye there, pins it dead center. Top so for James Wade. Game Usually shot. one outcome. Ninety. Just setting up. James Wade will look to do the same by filling it up. One hundred and eighty. Well, better late than never, James. And that may prove to be the case. No Jamie Hughes has, in truth, got nowhere near the double top. And James Wade can win the match by popping it in. James and he has a 6-1 success Wade. for the machine. James Wade, who goes through to the quarterfinals, where he will face Jermaine Watermaina because Watermaina has just knocked out the daddy of Dutch darts, Raymond van Barneveld, in the last 16. And Connor causing all this treble, but it's in the wrong bed on that occasion. 54. And he could be inflicting his own problems here. One big visit from Schindler, and all of a sudden this leg turns around. And there it is. Well, it's another in there for double 16. Nicely done. Game oh, shot. yeah, what a shot that is from Connor Scott. Martin Schindler weighing in with a maximum, and then Scott crafting a beautiful 1-3-4. James Wade has not won a title in 2022, but is now just two wins away from adding his name to the annual role of honour. Connor Scott is the one man in the field where a victory would mean much more than just a victory. 100. So the winner of this to face James Wade. Schindler. 57. Looking to move within two. 20 for the ball. Oh, no, no. Naughty little Martin. 55. Very naughty. Deciding against going for the bullseye. Is he going to get his fingers burned? Oh, what a shot that is. What a moment that is. What an exchange that is between Martin Schindler and Connor Scott. Martin Schindler turning down the bull. Another little wall to navigate here. Every treble hurts. Every treble counts now. 
and Martin Schindler should be getting at least one match start. Brutal bounce out. But what a response. Oh, you can't throw it now, Connor. Well, real darting drama. It's been filled with it today. It always is on Judgment Day. Players Championship 30. And that's a mess from Martin. But that's an excellent recovery to earn himself a, a double 16. <laughs> and Connor Scott now will get the chance to win 6-5 for the third time today and keep this incredible story alive. He gets two at double 12. Sixty-two. But he fails to find it. Well, Martin Chinder just trying to keep his cool now amongst all of the theatrics from Scott behind him. He can't believe that when it came to the crunch, he's missed by such a margin. Two darts to keep the dream going. But the dream dies. Not to mention... Lexi, who's been around in a few years now, very talented sports person herself. But it's beaten on the two daughter after nine this time. 77. It's not often you find yourself with a chance of beating Chisnell in a leg by 289 points. But that's what's happened. When the Belgian Open in 1993. A lot of the dark players who turned up today weren't even born in 1993. He's one of those immortal dark players that have defended the Dutch Open in 95 and 96. But in PDC darts, two players' championship victories, one in 2009, one in 2017. So an eight-year drought between those two, but they were sandwiched by a European tour win in 2013 when he beat Mervyn King in the final of the German Darts Masters. Can it be 5-2? 72. He's not going to be punished for those two misses, but you sense if he's going to win the title today, he can't afford to be missing things like that. 59. Game shot. Doesn't miss sixes. Still in control after two visits. And that control is getting more assured, especially with that maximum. Monstrous 180 there from Beaton. 100. If you're looking for romance this weekend, look no further. He wants this so badly. One hundred and forty. Here you are then, Steve. For the final. Game no hesitation. Steve Beaton. First final in five seasons. He's there and he's got a chance of his first title in five years. But it is the tournament where he, he reached the final two years ago. Jose de Souza, the man who beat him in that final, again having to come through the qualifier. There's an awful lot of big names at the Grand Slammer darts, or not at the Grand Slammer darts, I should say, who are having to go through the qualifier. Gary Anderson, he's not going to be there. He's not even playing the qualifier. Now think about the amount of money that would come off if he didn't qualify tomorrow. Winning today is not going to influence that. All he wants is to win a title. 44. He gives Beaton a chance of 2-1 and three breaks in three legs. Only going to be one dart at tops. Game oh, shot. that is beautiful. You can see he's gone for the treble 20, ended up a little bit low and to the right. A certain level, a competitive level throughout his entire time in the PDC that means there's always a chance. And every now and again, he takes that chance. 136. And that is a very, very decent two treble visit for Beaton. And he's going to get a chance to hold his throw. It'd be the first holder throw in this final, and it could open up a little bit of daylight. 50. He's been the better player by the tiniest of margins in this game. But James Wade's on 120, and you don't want to let Wade have a go at those sort of figures. No, you don't. 
game show. Well adhered to, Steve. 4-2, halfway point. If he was to win, I'm sure Nanette would give him the biggest hug in the world. I'm sure Sammy is watching along for James. 180. Great maximum. And he didn't divert away from that treble 20, even though a single 20 would have left a bogey number because of Steve's position. I don't mind him doing that in that spot. 140. Well, ultimately, he was proved right, wasn't he? He had the marker darts. He stayed there. He's not going to go bull bull. But he's not going to find the treble 20 either. 105. Does leave himself on his favourite double 10, though. He's following your pattern, isn't he? He's only going to win breaks of throw. But he does need 100. a hold if he wants to win this final at some point. First job, break here. Find double 10. And doesn't, and no Beaton's score. got a chance for 6-2. Well, he made a mess of the 86 in the last leg. 84, similar shot. 14 segment. This time he does get a dart at the bull. 59. And he is so, so close to a 6-2 lead that would have looked domineering. Is that kind? Game it shot. is. A somewhat ironic celebration. To answer the question you posed, I think, posed, I think 2017 is the 100. only year where James Wade has not won a title of some sort. Uh, and that's going back well over a decade. 60. He constantly picks up, maybe not an enormous haul. Some years have been better than others. Yeah, he won a Euro Tour in 2016. Yeah. 180. And it's a 180 here. That is number four for James Wade. We are already in perhaps his best haul for maximums in an individual 55. game today. Is he doing just enough again? 80 scored it's what I like to call a finger of fudge match. 100. Because it's just enough to give yourself a treat. Well, 12 grand in ranking money is the treat on offer. 125. I think Steve knows he's going to be in a bit of a Brahma from here. Game shot. It is going to be first to three from here, and Beaton has lost that advantage of throw. Having said that, it hasn't meant much in this game. The Players' Championship Series for the year. He has said this for, for a decade. The, look, I know I'm not 100. one of the top boys anymore, but I feel that I'm good enough to win titles. I feel that I can beat everybody. and I can walk into a room and be in a tournament... And at the end of it, I can be the one walking away with the title. Well, he's illustrating that here today. He's got a chance. But this is a massive moment. 12 segment. You asking me or? No. For the ball. 56. Well, he was having a conversation with the referee mid-rhythm. I don't know whether that was a good or a bad thing. Game shot. It was a bad thing because he's lost the leg significantly below that seven legs into this final but this little spell he's got back to where he was and he's gambled there and it's paid off again well nobody's won more titles in PDC darts in the last 15 years averaging 93 140. he can win with a 93 when the other person's averaging 105 treble 20 for double top it's his third go at 125 Game and he shot. gets it right finally. It's a brilliant 12 dart leg from James Wade. Fill it up and he gets to a good one. But they're not the troubles he's after. 135. Yeah, it's in. That was a nice little sneak into the top left corner, wasn't it? Wade showing that stubbornness on the treble 20, but he's so good at negotiating his way past those blocker darts, and he's done it expertly there. It's an easier finish for James Wade. Will he get a go at it? Oh, what a shot that would have been, but he's going to have to dodge another bullet here, Steve Beaton. Well, this is a weird finish, isn't it? 61 for tops. There's the 60. There's the one. There's the tops, and there's the win for Wade. The title drought is over, but it continues for the bronze Adonis, who had a valiant fight in him. Ultimately, he will have to wait until possibly later in 2023 for that win, but you can see what it means to Wade.